Hello subscribers and non-subscribers and welcome back to Rule the Waves 2. So, uh, relations are starting to get high with the Germans, the British, and the French. Which is not something I'm particularly looking forward to, uh, with all of them being high at least. So we're going to try and get relations to go down. Uh, with at least some of them. Holy crap, the British really increased their naval budget. They've got frickin' double. Not quite, but, you know. Simple numbers here. Double our budget. And we were fairly close before, but we were at both at about 500 some odd thousand for our yearly budgets. Um, I'm assuming I missed something on here. That's, that's my assumption. So, Filter, Great Britain, did they increase their budget at some point and I just, you know, yes. Um, they've actually pretty much been increasing their budget roughly every turn, it looks like, almost. And sadly, so, if I get into a war with the British and I'm beating them, because their naval spending is so high, at least in theory, I believe that will increase unrest because they'll get a lot more of those. Uh, the people are upset about um, basically ludicrous naval spending. But I don't know for certain on that. If they actually will get more of those. I'm going to go ahead and do another proposal for a new fighter. It's been about a year since the other one, but we've been informed that rumors are the French and the Russians have faster uh, lot faster fighters than us. So let's go ahead and see if we can get another one. Really? Uh, the government should consider social reforms to care for the unemployed. So, Panama being neutral probably isn't the worst thing ever, but I'd rather hold on to it. New docs completed. Tell Italy to... Oh no, Italy's wanting to sell me something. Okay, yes, I'll take hydrostatic pistols. Which further improves my ASW capabilities and an unexpected advance in fire control for 15 foot range finder and close to mastering increased battery capacity and there we go naval aviation heavier than air we're going to go ahead and set that to a high priority research field because that'll get us our uh, carriers. Rhode Island has finished her reconstruction along with the Kentucky. Some enterprising young officers in naval intelligence have hatched a plan to blow up one of the capital ships of Great Britain at anchor. You are asked to give the plan the go-ahead. Um, no. I don't really want to fight the British right now, especially with tensions with the Germans and French being as high as they are. Okay, the British were sort of forced to bring back down their naval expenses. But look at that, 20 frickin' dreadnoughts and they got three more building. Uh, Italy wants to sell me quality one three inch guns. I don't use three inch guns on like anything I'm pretty sure, but I'll still take them. And an unexpected advance in hull construction. Weight savings on hull, increased reliability of submarines, and we are suffering a temporary setback on Daihatsu barges. Oh, I didn't start my timer, did I? No, I didn't. Okay, well, it's, this is only be going for about four minutes, so that's fine. I'll just let the timer run for its normal full length of an hour. 
Alabama has been commissioned, and we've crushed the rebels in Panama. Good. And the Alabama needs to be rebuilt. Also, speaking of ships that need to be rebuilt, uh, yeah. The only non-obsolete game des designs that the game shows us are our Shreds and our Indianas. So, um, you know, maybe a new heavy cruiser. I think that might be... Okay, game. Can't do superimposed turrets. You forget about this, it seems, at times. Um, and single mount... For that um you know what yeah sure we'll do five threes that's whatever um all or nothing armor it's fine uh medium range i don't know why you're wanting to do short now inclined belt to my understanding um does improve your belt to a degree but it has a side effect of basically leaving small gaps between the belt and the deck. That in theory, if the enemy gets really lucky, they could get a shot down through one of those small gaps and they don't have to worry about any penetration. And so you potentially run the risk of um, the enemy being able to get a shot through to critical components like your machinery um, just by getting lucky with a shot. However, it does provide a benefit that because your belt is now inclined to some other degree than what it normally is, the enemy shots are potentially more likely to ricochet off of the belt. Uh, depending on the angle that they make impact at. So, we'll do it. Because, I mean, it, it seems like a great idea. Uh, I'm going to clear the turrets because, again, the game's got funky-looking designs. Or, well, locations for them, at least. No, they're supposed to look like that, apparently. Can I do triples on you? I can. But we're going to do triple turrets on the Houston here. Uh, and 54. Well, 27 AA guns for a total of 54 positions used. Two torpedo defense. Uh, no, actually, two and a half inch secondaries is fine. Okay. I was thinking of upping your speed, but apparently I can't do that. Unless I make the ship larger, which I could do. It doesn't really affect anything significantly. Uh, give you more those get rid of that decrease those okay game you will let me do that i'm gonna go with four inch secondaries um because their primary purpose is going to be dual purpose once we unlock that and actually i think i've been saying that i think Five and six inch guns are first. Turns out actually, at least from what I could find and if I'm recalling correctly, four inch is actually uh, what comes first. So in theory, you guys should get dual purpose before anybody else. So you're going to be my primary, basically AA cruisers in a sense. Um, you're quite a bit faster than basically everything else except for our destroyers. And in fact, you are actually faster than those old Bane bridges that we still have roaming around. Even though they probably shouldn't be, all things considered. Also, my understanding is... So dual purpose can only be done on single and double uh, turrets. So if I did triples, they would be limited solely to um, anti-ship warfare. Now, I don't know if there's an improvement to heavy AA factor for dual and single mounts. But I'm just going to keep these guys as single mounts. Once for that, let's go and design a light cruiser as well while we're at it. Um, nope. Not submerged torpedoes. 
Um, is the ship too big or something? I'm either I'm blind or I'm not seeing the option for J and K. Okay, well now they're showing up here like that. That's whatever. I'm I'm confused, but whatever. Uh, give you that inclined belt. Uh, that could stay at that. Twenty nine is a nice speed. Uh, central firing, yes. And I'm gonna say no to the Q midship and no to the aft center line. In fact, I'm actually gonna clear your turrets and I'm just gonna give you forward, aft, double turrets. Oh yes, I haven't researched those yet, so... Uh, excuse me, did I say doubles? I meant singles. What's the biggest gun I can put? Six inches is the biggest I can put on here. Okay. That's kind of annoying, actually, but whatever. I'll remove all the AA for a second. Four-inch secondaries. How many will you let me put on before you complain? Uh, 16 looks to be the most, but I'm going to make the ship just a tad bit bigger. Give you all the AA I can. That gives no room for improvements without a machinery replacement. They need to be at least two inches to avoid splintering. That means I need to make this ship at least 6,100 ton displacement. Which, of course, uh, can I fit more secondaries on you? Can. Okay, there we go. So, we have eight torpedoes in two tube mounts, two sets on each side. Eighteen four-inch secondaries that'll be serving as dual purpose down the line once you research that. Speed of 29, so these can keep up with the Houstons that we're designing. Uh, they're not super big when it comes to their guns at only a single four and a aft. At six inches, because that's the largest that you can put on a light cruiser. Eventually I'll be able to do double mounts, but we haven't researched that. And I think we saw last part something about setbacks for that. Uh, if I'm recalling correctly. We're not super heavily armored on our belt, uh, but admittedly, I don't think that's too big of a deal. Yeah, most light cruisers, as of when I updated this, tend to be around five or two point five. There's a couple threes mixed in, but I think we're okay. You're mostly going to rely on your speed to avoid being hit. Question is, do I want to give you that? You know what? Four light AA guns does nothing for you, really. You're just not going to have any AA capability. Do I want to give you that? No, I don't think I do. You know what? Because I'm not going to give you that third fire control position, I'll let you keep the four AA guns for the literally worthless that they are. Uh, yep, whatever. Override it. Give me the Minneapolis. And we've stolen the designs for the British ship Dreadnought Bulwark, which is a new class of ship that I have no info on, with 20 light AA guns, 8 16-inch guns, 14 6-inch guns and dual mounts, 12-inch belt, 3-inch deck, 13-inch turrets, 6-inch secondaries, and 12 and a half inch on the conning tower. They do still use torpedo tubes for whatever reason on their dreadnoughts. With two submerged, they do have fire control director. Now 12 inches of belt armor. 
gonna have to remember that number. But first things first. I like the Curtis here. 95 range. It's a little bit faster at 59 with a max speed of 93. Yeah, we're gonna take the Curtis here. Now that was 12 inches of belt armor they had. We can pen that if we get in to 8,000 yards on our Wyomings. It, it's going to be the same with the Kentuckys because they're also 14-inch guns. Ah, but our Indianapolises are 16. So you can start penning 12 at 16,000. So you have a lot more range be able to start penning those new ships yeah you have basically double the range so you can be twice as far out to pen 12 inches of belt armor so hopefully our indianapolises are good against those nice new um bulwarks that are not ready yet they're not going to be ready for another year ish give or take and Russian light cruiser, uh, the Diana class, six six inch guns. Oh god, that's the crappy design the game is trying to give me. Also, you have mines. Also, one and a half inches of belt armor is worthless. You might as well just not even bother putting any belt armor, realistically speaking, because it serves basically no purpose. So the Minneapolis is already for construction. Let's do two for now. Actually, no, no, we'll do four for now. It's not a lot, but it's something. Um, and we'll slow down production on the Indiana. Revolution in a South American country has left some of our nationals stranded. Tensions are high. Let's join an international squadron to contain the violence. That still raises tensions. Boeing has developed an improved version of the Buffalo. It is able to carry bombs. That's literally its only benefit. It took you a year, give or take, to figure out a way to slap two 60 pound bombs on the ship with literally no other improvement. Great job, guys, but I'll still take it. It's not great, but I'll still take it. Uh, four more, well, not four more, four of the Houstons as well to go with our four Minneapolises. Let's stop spying on the French and the Russians, or excuse me, the British and the Russians. Agent caught by Germany, let's make the agent a hero. Uh, Japan stole something from me. Send them a letter telling them we're upset. Ah yes, the Wyomings. Um, I need to move you guys. Uh, let's put the Wyomings in Southeast Asia. We'll put the Kentuckys in the Caribbean. We'll take the New Mexicos that have been be if, eh, that have been made battle cruisers and move them to Southeast Asia as well. Uh, I will move one of these constitutions to the South Pacific to support the other one. But the constitution is going to go and support the Lexington. The Saratoga and Constellation are going to stay where they are. Um, really? No, the ship does not identify as a as a battle as a dreadnought. Why do you want to now classify it as a dreadnought? You literally said it was fine as a battle cruiser before, but now you want it to be a dreadnought. Really? No, screw you, game. We're not doing that. Uh, these Oklahomas. I wanted to send you guys through some stuff as well. I think. Elevation, give you that, make you faster. Well, a little. 
give you a a or move a set of tertiary guns because they're not that important actually i'll just move all your tertiaries did i make you get to 20. i can get you to 20 wonderful still not quite the greatest Um, can I give you... no, not quite. Well, I could. I just need to remove some AA. Which I'm fine with doing, actually. How many until you complain about this? Oh, you'll let me put... okay. You'll let me put 24 of those. But that's not really gonna work, I'm afraid. Ah, these things are tiny. Oh yeah, yeah, the Oklahomas are tiny. At 13,000, yeah, uh... Yeah, we're just not gonna bother with those, I think. Uh, the Oklahomas, I will send to... You know what, I'll send two to Southeast Asia and two to the South Pacific. Alabama finally finished her reconstruction, and the Japanese are building seaplane carriers. And Germany has gone to war with us. So, high intelligence on the Germans. They technically have stuff we can invade. We could invade uh, the Bismarck Archipelago, so let's go ahead and do that, because why not? That's... Literally the only thing they have that we can invade, so most of our fighting will likely happen in the South Pacific, because it's the only area that we both share stuff. Oh, whoops, thanks for reminding me, game. Uh, okay, I need some foreign tonnage somewhere, apparently. I don't know where. Ah, North Pacific. Um, shoot. You are on trade. I'm gonna take these two Lake Moors. And I'm gonna move them to the North Pacific for trade protection. I think those two should be enough to give me the tonnage. Hell, even one might be fine because they have the colonial. Um, service thing, which I think is an extra 50% to tonnage on foreign station, and I only need a thousand, and they have 600 tonnage, so they should give me 1200 each. But, whatever, we'll, we'll do it this way, it's fine. I know, game. It, it's okay. Huh, and a battle Gu around Guantanamo. And they are going to give battle. Well, we're going to get to see how our Kentuckys hold up, because this is... I believe this is the first battle we ever actually had the Kentuckys in. I think we had the Wyomings in a previous engagement. Now, our guys are heading south, which would indicate that presumably the enemy is coming from the south. Because typically the game does a good enough job of having you face the direction that the enemy's coming from. And that would indeed look to be the case. Oops, also need to change you guys to line ahead. Um, and you. Okay, there's an armored cruiser, or at least what's being identified as an armored cruiser. Let's have Destroyer Division 3 go full speed. Now, they didn't have a whole lot of stuff here, but they did have some dreadnoughts, I believe. Yeah, there we go. There they are. Full speed ahead, Kentuckys. Found you some nice juicy targets to shoot at. 
with your nice 14 inch guns. Oh, oh, you poor, poor. Nine inch belts? I'm pretty sure we can pen nine inch belts with ease. Uh, yeah, we can pen nine inch belts pretty much guaranteed at about 16,000, because that's the average. In theory, we can start penning them at about 17,000. Yeah, I don't think these, this Maxin class here is going to do particularly great. Um, now, it, annoyingly, it does have secondaries. I say that's annoying because if it didn't have secondaries, I could, in theory, fairly easily run my destroyers through it. But because it has secondaries, to run my destroyers through it is going to take some effort. Ah, and they also brought in battle cruisers. Now those are a bit more reasonable at 11 and a half inches of belt armor. Two inch belts, not the greatest, but they'll live. Now that avoids splintering. Oh, you've brought in a variety of dreadnoughts. Uh, the year is 1923, so the Mackinsons are still recent. The so, uh, Pomeran class here is considered old, with a 12-inch belt. So, you know, again, it actually has some armor, but also has crappy 11-inch guns. Well, I say crappy. They might be good 11-inch guns, but they're only 11-inch guns, and I'm pretty sure 11-inch guns aren't going to be able to pen our armor that easily. Oh, do you guys have the three fire control positions? Does that give you any increased hit? Uh, I don't know. Fire control is just zero with director, so... um, Maybe it helps, maybe it doesn't, I got no idea. Um, shoot, are you guys gonna just come right at me? Because, I mean, that'll make my life easy if we do this. You got a shot at that guy? I think you might. You do. But I'm pretty sure he's turning. But I don't think you're likely to hit him if he actually does that turn. Oh, it turns out he was, but, you know, he's also kind of a big guy. So he makes wide, wide turns. That one's a little bit more likely to hit, I think. Oh shit, the steward's gonna... Oh, Stuart, you lucky bastard. Uh, that has a chance to hit. And Stuart, do you happen to have a shot? No, you don't. You don't have a shot on anybody, I'm afraid. Aha, there we go. Oh, yeah. We're going to tell the Terry to leave, because the Terry's, Terry's hurt pretty badly. And it's not going to do much of anything at this point, so just go to Guantanamo, sure. And I don't know what happened to that armored cruiser. Oh, there it is. It turned in. Oh, have we done anything to their battle cruisers, out of curiosity? Well, I wasn't aiming for that Pomern, but it managed to get unlucky and take a torpedo, so, um, lucky us. Let's start turning our Kentucky so that they can get their rear guns on target. That's... Okay, for a second there I thought somebody's had a disabled turret. Yeah, these Kentuckys are gonna probably hurt. Mackinson got hit by the Rhode Island, only a single hit. But it's a hit nonetheless. Uh, oh, the Chauncey's going down. Yep, Chauncey sunk. And for some reason, the Steward and Warden have decided to go their separate ways. So, that's a thing I have to deal with now. I'm gonna break you guys off. Pomeran has taken a hit to its... Has it? Yep, the Pomeran has taken a hit to its rudder. So, its rudder has been disabled.
Why have the Brooklyn and Pittsburgh decided to break off? I don't know. Uh, Perry, you... Well, no, that guy's turning, isn't he? Or did he stop? I don't know. Either way, take a shot. Yep, go ahead and do that. That's fine. Oh, that Palmer, and I got lucky. Well, Truxton, you have a shot as well. And in theory, the Perry has another shot, but I don't think I want you to take it. I'll have the Smith, I think, fire as well. Oh, and they... Oh, no, is it... I think its rudder was still broken. It hasn't fixed it. Just for some reason, I thought it had... Yeah, I'm pretty sure its rudder is actually still broken, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, Truxton's in the lead. You have this other Pomeran. Go ahead and take that shot. Smith, do you happen to have a shot at him as well? You don't. Now I think you might. Go ahead and take that shot. So the Truxton and Smith are out. The Lampson still has all of its, and Perry's is down to half. Ooh, yeah, that Pomeran's not lasting, and the Truxton needs to get the hell out of here. Because if it doesn't, it's going to sink. I'm going to break the Smith and Lampson off. Perry is going down, but it's going to get a torpedo off. That's going to fail to hit the Pomeran, because of course it is. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna keep trying to scare off those battle cruisers. I don't really want to deal with them. Ooh, Smith's on fire. That's not great, because destroyers don't typically do a great job at the whole being on fire thing. Balding. I don't think you have a shot at him. Oh, you do, actually. Do you have a shot as well? You do. Balding also, because there's a chance of you sinking, I want you to go ahead and fire the other torpedo as well. Then I want you to break off. And you control over to the Macdono. Uh, okay, you don't want to fire your torpedo, that's fine. You don't have an arc, really. That's surprising. Okay. You have a shot. Go ahead and take it. You also have a shot. Go ahead and take it. I want to make sure this guy goes down. Heavily damaged. Yeah, he's going down. Uh, where are my dreadnoughts? Still chasing after their battle cruisers. Holding, you are going to Guantanamo. Actually, no. Put a port pax That should be faster for you. Uh, I'm gonna have you guys go south. I don't really want to leave that Pomeran alive up there, though, to be completely honest. And Smith is still burning. Okay, Smith, because you're burning so badly, I think I'm just gonna tell you to get off. Oh, you're not... Really, game? You're gonna complain to me about, oh, he's not damaged enough to break off, but he should be, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, those battle cruisers are, and the purple is sinking. Uh, the Brooklyn does not have the nice, fancy service torpedoes. Far one up the rear. And it misses, because of course it does. Well, that or, you know, maybe it just didn't arm or something to that effect, but... Oh, never mind, you're an armored cruiser. You're not going to get the fancy ones anyway. I don't know what their battle cruisers are doing. Because for one, they're heading right towards my 
location. Okay, it looks like the port to pox battery, the game decided to put them all around port to prince rather than putting any up here by port to pox. Which is annoying. Uh, wibble, break off. Like Dono, I think I was trying to tell you to go to Port de Pox, but change of plans. Turns out that's not such a great plan. Okay, I'm gonna send the Huntington and Rochester north to chase after the Pomeran that's going north that the Smith is also following. Is the Smith now considered sufficiently damaged? Yes, it is. Wonderful. Smith, you're going to Guantanamo. Because I don't want you to sink. You're a little too important for that. Oh shit, they're, that armored cruiser is a lot faster than mine here. Okay, I don't care about the Mackinson game. The Mackinson's gonna sink, I already know that. We're just getting loads of hits on it. Warden misunderstands signal. Pittsburgh, you're gonna go north as well. You guys turn north now. Uh, what's the max speed on you? 22. Okay, then I can't catch up with you. You are gonna get away, I'm afraid. Well, for me. That's not great news. Because none of my stuff here can go faster. With the exception of my destroyers, who most of which are kind of beat up. And some of which actually are now limited to 22 knots. Uh, well, hopefully the parry can manage to make it to uh, Guantanamo. Well, I really just hope we sink the battlecruisers now. But that's looking unlikely to happen, because they are faster than us. Yep, they're gonna get away. Damn, that sucks. Well, we sunk two battleships and lost two destroyers. That's an okay trade. Actually, your top speed is 15, or is 22 knots, but you're damaged to some extent, so you are gonna go slower than that, which in this case looks to be around about 15-ish knots, so okay, I can catch up to you. Yeah, those battlecruisers are gonna get away, but I'm still gonna chase them with all my might, because I'm not gonna give them a easy getaway. You lay smoke, lamps, and you gotta cover the Truxton. Actually, really, the Truxton doesn't have anything. I probably could break the Truxton off, but we're not going to do that. Uh, the Terry managed to repair... Was it the Terry? Yeah, the Terry. I have a Terry. Oh, yes, I do. I kind of forgot about the Terry. Uh, the Stuart. Why am I... What am I doing with you? Ah, uh, yes, you're badly beat up. You're going to port. Okay, we've lost sight of the battle uh, the battle cruiser, so I'm going to tell my battleships to go... Well, you know what? I'm just going to send them straight for the Pomeran. I do expect those battle cruisers to potentially turn back into the fight, but in that case, I should spot them. a little more. Oh, okay, he's turning back north. Lamsoon, do you happen to have a shot before you go down? No, you don't. Break off. You guys aren't going anywhere. 
guys turn in because he's coming south now. Send the Wibble to go along with the Pittsburgh. Lamb soon, I need you to find a way to get out of there. And Lamb soon is sinking. Damn. Okay, so two battleships in exchange for three destroyers. Again, still an okay trade. It could certainly have been better though. But, you know, in a way that's always the case, you know. If you lose anything, technically speaking, it could have been better. Uh, we've lost sight of that armored cruiser, which I'm not a fan of because it could be heading straight for the transports that I have no idea where they are. Rochester is running out of ammo. Uh, got a hit on the Pomeran, but you guys didn't really do anything. You're firing high explosive. And I'm pretty sure you guys literally cannot pen it, right? Seven inch guns? Yeah, no, you're not penning it at all unless you got a hit on the deck, which at close range you're not going to get. Okay, now you're firing AP, which does mean that you think you can get penetrations. And okay, we are going to lose an armored cruiser as well because apparently this thing fired a torpedo. I mean, I know it had torpedoes, but still, I, you know, didn't expect it to fire one and even less expected it to hit. You've got a shot, take it. That's gonna hit. Wonderful. Break off. Or I can't tell you to because you've decided to go AI controlled. You lay smoke. Pittsburgh is still trying to be useful. Okay, and it's still managing to travel at a nice 15 knots. Well, the armor cruiser is definitely up here because it's shooting at our transports. We don't see it. I'm pretty sure it's not the Pomeran that's shooting. I'm like 99% certain of that because even though it has range, I don't think it sees these guys. Brooklyn's going to go ahead and try and find the enemy armored cruiser that's harassing our transports. We're probably going to lose one. Uh, the Wibble has the torpedoes, so... I would prefer if the Wibble was in the back, but I can't adjust the layout, sadly. Okay, now that trans... Or that... Dreadnought, the Pomeran, has shots at us. We're at our transports. And the Wibble, of course, the one with torpedoes, ends up being the one to take a hit. Luckily, it's not a major hit. It's only a hit to the frickin' torpedo room, or engine room, rather. I was about to say torpedo room for some reason. You've reloaded, you have a shot, but I don't think it's likely to hit, to be completely honest. Now you should have a shot. You do take it. That misses. Bad turn on his part. And it misses. And I did not want the Pittsburgh to group up with the Brooklyn because the Brooklyn's badly damaged and has to leave. You stupid, stupid Pittsburgh. I 
don't know what the hell the Rochester is doing. Uh, I think it was escorting the battle cruisers, because that's well, it was screening them at least. Because that's technically what it's supposed to be doing. Oh hey, the warden. You have torpedoes. Get in there. Nice and fat. No, 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 no. Oh wait, yes, I wanted you to enter that. No, damn you. Uh, keep going. I think eventually the game will ask me again. Warden, I need you to turn. There you go. You fired your torpedo on your own. Well, you fired one. Pretty sure both of those hit, but I'm not 100% certain. No, one, only one hit. And the thing is still frickin' moving. God, this thing does not die. This is this battle's going on a lot longer than I think it should have. All things considered. There we go. Finally. The battle cruisers got away. Annoyingly. Yep. Interport. I know you guys are running low on ammo. Make sure he sinks. That should end the battle because we're not finding those battle cruisers. I'm a little shocked we ended up with a fight here in the Caribbean, you know, what with uh, them not having any territory in the Caribbean. I can't really do anything about that. Uh, the Paulding... Yeah, the Paulding's just going all over the frickin' place. So, sunk three battle... or excuse me, three Dreadnoughts. Lightly damaged a battle cruiser, and lightly damaged an armored cruiser. All in exchange for three destroyers and an armored cruiser. And a medium damaged auxiliary. Um, which I don't know what that is, because, oh no, that would be, that, that would be one of the transports. LT is, uh, land targets, which apparently I have 11 land targets in this general battle area. I mean, I guess, sure, one, two, three, uh, long Florida. Four in Guant, once you count Guantanamo, two more in Haiti, bring E to six, eight, Nine, actually. Once you toss in Puerto Rico. And two more. Okay, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't consider Florida, Puerto Rico, or Panama to be really in this battle area. But sure, I have 11 in this theater, technically speaking. And 10,000 victory points for us. Battle of Windward Passage. And step back and figuring out concepts of improved armor testing methods. And improved firefighting. Wonderful. And close to mastering mine rails. So eventually we'll be able to put mines on our light cruisers and destroyers. And the invasion of the Bismarck Archipelago delayed due to unfavorable weather. Our submarine has torpedoed in German Corvette. Or whatever it's worth. How much time is left to my timer? God, that battle did not. 15 more minutes. That... Oh boy. You know what? I'm gonna make this a shorter episode, because that battle went on for longer than I really expected it to, all things considered. And it kind of drained me, to be honest. It really did. I did not expect it to go for as long as it did. I really expected a fairly short battle. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and end this part here. It's a little bit shorter, only about 50 minutes rather than the usual hour plus some. Um, but yeah, so I will see you all next time where we will be continuing this battle with the Germans and potentially finishing it if all the battles go like that where I gain 10,000 some odd victory points uh, for every 1,400 that they gain. 
you know, it will easily come out on top. And they're just kind of throwing their navy away, to be honest. They don't have much. Let's be real here. They really don't. I mean, they have three dreadnoughts with one on the way. Well, guess what I just did? I sunk three of your dreadnoughts. That's why now you're down to four rather than the um, six that you should have had. Also, you must have scrapped one or something. Because I only sunk three. And last time I looked at this, you had four, but you were building two more, which would have got you to six. So something happened to one of those. I don't know what. Now, their battlecruisers got away, lucky for them. But, you know, not going to do them much good, those battlecruisers. They're really not. And that's actually their only armored cruiser that got away. Now, if we had sunk that, they'd have absolutely zero armored cruisers. Huh, now that's interesting, game. So, you say their armored cruiser tonnage is 13,800. Their total um, armored cruiser tonnage is 27,600, which would indicate that they have more. Because this is supposed to be what they have in service right now. This is including whatever is being built. Ah, they technically have two, but one of them is currently interned in a port somewhere. At some random neutral port, I don't recall the game telling us about any of their stuff being interned. Um, let's check this real quick. Yeah, I see a, a bunch of laid down from the Germans, but I don't see anything about any of their armored cruisers being interned. But they have... Apparently that has happened. And that would mean it would have had to have happened prior. Ah. Okay, so it did happen actually this turn. I just did not get a notification in messages it shows up here in Intel reports. So... The Hertha is damaged and has been interned in a neutral port. Now, I kind of get the feeling the Hertha might have been that one that we just fought. Yeah, because it says they have none here. So, yes, I think the Hertha was the one that we fought. And it fled to, like, the Dominican Republic or something and has been interned there. Is my best guess. Again, I'm a little surprised we had a fight in the Caribbean, because they have nothing in the Caribbean. I don't know why they have a fleet there. That fleet is technically out of supply. Which presumably should mean that it's not fighting, but that's not the case, apparently. Or it should not be able to really fight. Because there are no nearby ports, unless their stuff has long range. I don't know the service range. Um... For their sh or however the game labels it. Uh, just range, okay. I don't know what the range is on those battle cruisers and whatnot. Maybe they have long range, which I think would allow them to cover Northern Europe and the Caribbean. But I don't know why you would do that. There's a reason I don't build long range, anything other than medium range ships. Short is not good, or is not good enough. Long range uses up extra weight for no real benefit. Um, and then there is also, what is it called? Extreme range, which again, just uses up extra weight that's not necessary. You know. The weight used on this is 707 at short range, 822 at medium range, 1,325 at long range, and then 1,565 at extreme range. Why would I do that? I don't need long or extreme range, and again, short is just too short. It's not good enough. Yep, 
Well, this battle, or this war with Germany should probably end fairly quickly. I don't know what we'll take. I'm hoping to invade the Bismarck Archipelago before the war ends, though. But we will probably take just reparations from them, because they don't have anything I want. I don't think I really care to take anything in Africa right now. And I don't care for... Um, Sing Tao Bay here, or excuse me, Kaicho Bay. The port is Sing Tao. I don't care to take that. So, hopefully, we'll invade Bismarck Archipelago before the war ends and successfully take it. Then the war will end and then we'll take reparations. I think is what we'll do. But I'll see you all next time. Quick reminder one thing I've been forgetting to mention for these videos I do have a Discord and a Patreon. You can find links to those down in the description below. My Discord is my go-to place for posting about channel happenings. And my Patreon is if you enjoy the content and you want to help support the channel, that's a nice, easy way to help support the channel for as little as a dollar a month. You'll get early access to all of my videos. Uh, but until the next part, goodbye and farewell.